What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. One of my favorite parts of the Pokémon franchise is Pokémon abilities, and how they interact and can completely change the way that we look at a certain Pokémon. And of course, with any new generation, they'll come out with a dozen or two new abilities to add to the pool. So I thought it would be fun, and prudent, to familiarize ourselves with these new aspects of the Pokémon franchise. Although I will be treading lightly since I know there are still some people out there that haven't yet finished the game, so I'll be sensitive. And while the new abilities will be in discussion, we won't talk about every single new Pokémon. So, the first alphabetically is one that we've been shown in the lead-up to Sword and Shield with Ball Fetch on Yamper. This ability allows the Pokémon to retrieve the first failed Pokéball thrown in a wild encounter, provided they're not already holding an item. This of course means that it will be the same type of Pokéball that was first thrown in the failed catch. So if you use a Quick Ball at the top and it somehow doesn't work, Yamper will bring back the Quick Ball. But the same holds true if you start with a regular Pokéball and then move on to more specialized ones. So maybe consider that if you're using a Yamper. But also be aware that the ability only works if Yamper was actually in the battle. Having it in the back of the party is not enough. We've seen the Cotton Down ability on Gossifler and its evolution Eldegoss. Cotton Down scatters cotton fluff around when the Pokémon is hit, and this cotton lowers the speed of the other Pokémon. This works in single battles, but also spreads to all Pokémon in double battles. So lowering your opponent's speed every time they attack you is pretty useful. Although honestly, it could be more useful if Gossifler's speed wasn't so embarrassingly low. It might take five or six hits before you start outspeeding them anyway. Next is Dauntless Shield, and as you guessed, it's for... Zacian. Now, just kidding. It's obviously Zamazenta's new ability. Dauntless Shield simply raises the Pokémon's defense when they enter the battle. Not very complicated, but also something you would expect when having a giant shield for a face. Gorilla Tactics is the next new ability, and yes, they did spell it like the animal. This ability boosts the Pokémon's attack stat, but only allows the use of the first selected move in a battle. This essentially makes Gorilla Tactics a free choice band to any Pokémon that could have it, which could result in some pretty terribly powerful combinations since choice bands are quite popular hold items for physical attackers. But if they already have a free one and can hold a different item altogether, that could lead to some scary strong combinations. We did also see in a trailer Cramorant with its new signature Gulp Missile. This is a very strange ability, that once Cramorant uses Surf or Dive, moves that allow it to hunt in the water, it will return with prey in its mouth. Technically, this is considered a different form within the game, but once hit in this form, Cramorant will be compelled to spit the prey back out at the opponent, damaging them up to one-fourth of the enemy's health. Usually this will also lower the adversary's defense as well, but on occasion it can paralyze them instead, if Cremorant manages to scrounge up some different prey. I used to think that only having Gulp Missile activate by using two moves, Surf or Dive, was far too specific, but after seeing how good of a retaliation this ability actually provides, I suppose they didn't want to make it too overpowered. Hunger Switch obviously goes with more Pico as it makes the Pokémon change form between its full belly and hangry forms at the end of each turn. So I don't imagine there are too many more Pokémon that could have this ability, given its specific form change wording. Although given the description of Morpeko, committing unspeakable evil deeds until its hunger is satiated, I imagine it will lead many to claim this as their spirit animal. But really, the Hunger Switch ability itself doesn't do much aside from the constant form changes. Morpeko is still an electric and dark type in both forms. The only real difference is the move Aura Wheel, which despite being pretty good, it doesn't get until level 55. So Hunger Switch seems really more like a gimmick than a useful ability. The next ability is called Ice Face, and its description states that the Pokémon's Ice Head can take a physical attack as a substitute, which sounds pretty great. And the fact that it's only physical moves makes sure that it's not too powerful, giving us another Mimikyu to worry about. My first thought was if Glalie, the pure ice type known as the Face Pokémon, doesn't get access to this ability, something is wrong. 
but if you keep reading the description, it says that taking the substitute hit also changes the Pokémon's appearance, so I guess that's a no for Glalie. But Ice Face can also be replenished if the Pokémon is in Hail, meaning that you could use this free hit multiple times in one battle. Ice Scales is another new ability. This time it says the Pokémon is protected by Icy Scales, which have the damage of special moves. This is pretty good since we've had numerous abilities that deal with physical moves, such as Fluffy or Fur Coat, but we never seem to get the same blanket resistance on special moves. And I'm sure this could come in handy in the future. Even if Ice Scales specifically wouldn't apply, I'm sure they could make one with the same functionality. Intrepid Sword is the counterpart ability to Dauntless Shield, and the signature ability of Zacian. The only difference being that it increases attack when thrown into battle, which one would expect given the offensive nature of its chosen weapon. Libero is another new ability that might sound familiar to some. Libero allows the Pokémon to change types into the type of move it's about to use. That is the exact wording used to describe the ability Protean. So Libero is just a copy of the Protean ability, which is often considered one of the best. But since Libero has a very narrow potential, being a sports-related term, don't expect it to get a lot of widespread distribution. Mimicry is not too dissimilar, but only manipulated with slightly less ease. The Mimicry ability changes the Pokémon's type based on the terrain on the field at the time. So you could control this on your own if you devote a slot to a terrain move, but there are only four options currently available for that specific method of changing. However, it is slightly more useful in the Galar region, since certain max moves while Dynamaxing do add terrain effects as a byproduct. Another new ability that seems to be pretty great is Mirror Armor. This ability, given to Corviknight, reflects back any stat-lowering effects that would have hit this Pokémon, whether it's from moves or other abilities. That's a fantastic feature that doesn't make it too overpowered, but it would be the bane of rival trainers that rely on stat-lowering, or may even take some people by surprise, since there are so many moves that can lower stats that you might not even think about. But of course, you won't have to worry about any of those, or any other ability for that matter, if you have Neutralizing Gas. Galarian Weezing was shown to have this new ability that simply nullifies every other ability when it's out on the field. That could be a frightening concept for the Pokémon that depend on their abilities to remain competitively relevant. Or even more terrifying if used with Pokémon that have abilities designed to hinder them suddenly taken away. Pastel Veil is another ability tied to a Galarian form, this time being Ponyta. This ability prevents the Pokémon, as well as any allies, from being poisoned. That is an okay feature to have, nobody likes taking poison damage after all, but the new Ponyta is a Psychic type, so I'm not sure why anyone would be trying to use poison types anyway. I suppose other Pokémon could get this ability too, provided they were colorful enough. Next is the new ability Perish Body, and it's probably exactly what you're thinking. If a Pokémon makes contact with someone that has Perish Body, both Pokémon will have three turns before they faint, unless they switch out. That is just giving the Pokémon a free Perish Song whenever it's touched directly, which honestly sounds like it would be a huge pain to deal with all the time, with all the constant switching. But I really appreciate that they're trying new abilities that basically just give free turns or item slots by creating abilities to replace them. I just hope they'll actually be usable on the Pokémon that have access to them. The Power Spot ability simply powers up an ally's moves by being next to this Pokémon. That's all it says, but you don't really need much more than that to explain the power boost. This is like Chargebug's Battery ability, except that only applied to special moves but Power Spot looks to raise any kind of move. So even if a Pokémon wasn't any good, but had the Power Spot ability, it could still be useful. Propeller Tail is the next ability, but it wouldn't be a new generation of Pokémon without multiple new abilities that do the exact same thing, because we also look ahead to Stalwart. The descriptions of these abilities are identical, saying, it ignores the effects of other Pokémon's abilities and moves that draw in moves. So if your Pokémon has either of these abilities, they won't bother with any silly Me First or Storm Drain or anything. 
The wording also makes it sound like any ability will not be factored in, sort of like neutralizing gas, but it will definitely overcome anything that would make your move veer away from its intended target. Next is a new ability that I really like, and that is Punk Rock. It may not be what you think, since this ability boosts the power of sound-based moves, which would be good on its own, but Punk Rock also gives the Pokémon a resistance to sound moves. This is incredible! It essentially treats sound like a true Pokémon type. By giving the Pokémon stab on sound moves, or however much it boosts the attacks, and also letting it resist itself were it to actually be a sound type. The only downside, I feel, is the name. Since it alienates a good portion of potential candidates for this ability in the future, if they're not hardcore enough. Ripen is a pretty simple new ability. It says the Pokémon ripens berries. Oh, there's more. Ripening a berry apparently doubles its effects. So, double health restoration, double resistance to an incoming attack, if you're gonna eat it, you might as well eat it twice, right? The next ability is called Sand Spit, and it's really pretty simple. If the Pokémon is hit with an attack, it will spit out a Sandstorm. So basically this is Sand Stream, but it activates after the first turn, provided that you're actually hit. It would be so annoying to fight a Sand Spit Pokémon because that could conceivably be activated multiple times without having to switch out, unlike Sand Stream. And it even works when the Pokémon gets knocked out, as one last-ditch effort in the battle. Screen Cleaner is a new ability that I can already tell will be abused. When the Pokémon enters a battle, the effects of Light Screen, Reflect, and Aurora Veil are nullified on both sides of the field. I've honestly thought of this idea before, but said, No, you can't make that as an ability. Even if the Pokémon wasn't any good, people would just keep it around to switch in and get rid of screens. But what do I know, I guess? Next thing you know, they'll be making one that does the same thing with entry hazards. Roly Coley was shown in the trailers before Sword and Shield came out, listed as having the Steam Engine ability. This is another new ability that I greatly appreciate, because if Roly Coley is hit with a water or fire type attack, its speed will drastically increase. This is okay on the fire side, since rock resists fire anyway. But, taking resisted hits only to get faster and faster is not a bad deal. And it's sweetened even more if you can survive a super effective hit, only to outspeed them the next turn and kill them. Plus, the name is vague enough that it could go around to other Pokémon that aren't even necessarily the same type. Steely Spirit is a new ability that powers up allied Pokémon's Steel-type moves. So this is basically an external version of the Steelworker ability that Delmise had last generation. But it's also just a hyper-focused version of Power Spot that we just talked about. It definitely could be useful, if somewhat narrow, requiring the use of Steel-type moves, which even with the addition of Fairy, still has limited uses. And the final new ability introduced in Sword and Shield is Wandering Spirit. This swaps out abilities with any Pokémon that makes direct contact, giving you their ability. So, again, this seems like a mini neutralizing gas if you want to rob certain Pokémon of their useful abilities. Although if you do exchange abilities and make direct contact with the foe again, then you would simply get your Wandering Spirit ability back. So that little back and forth might get kind of old. So. Those are all of the brand new abilities introduced in Pokémon Sword and Shield. What's your favorite new ability? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!